Hi everyone. Um, it seems that the number of fatal dog attacks in this country are in the, are on the increase. So I thought this would be an interesting subject to look at. Um, the latest uh, the latest fatal attack involved a woman in I believe it was uh, Rotherham. Let me just get up the report. Uh, the reference to this. I've been browsing various articles on the subject because it's um it's something that scares me to be quite honest um but anyway yeah so uh it was in um yeah Rotherham South Yorkshire 43 year old woman I'm just reading out from the Wikipedia article this was reported in the national newspapers a few days ago uh Joanne Robinson 43 years old um was mauled at a home in Rotherham South Yorkshire her boyfriend named as Jamie Steed 42 suffered devastating injuries to his face, hands and chest as he tried to pull the animals off her. Uh, this was on the 15th of July. Now, the dogs involved were American Bully XLs, which I'd never heard of until, until this. 23rd of May 2022. Uh, Kevin Jones, 62 years old. Emergency services were called to report of a medical emergency in Holt Road, Wrexham. At about half twelve, uh, excuse me, half eleven, British Standard Time, a man died after being bitten by his daughter-in-law's dog and went into cardiac ar arrest. The man was pronounced dead at the scene despite efforts to rescue him. The dog involved, American Bully XL. The fifteenth of May, police were called by paramedics after the boy's injury after the boy was injured in an attack in Carley and Milne Road, Rochdale, just after one p.m. on Sunday. He was rushed to hospital but died of his injuries. This was a three-year-old boy killed by a cane corso. A Rockweiler, egged in Worcestershire, Lawson Bond, age two, suffered serious injuries and was in cardiac arrest following an attack in Egdon, Worcestershire on Monday, March 28th. Three Rockweilers that were removed from the property following the attack were housed security by West Mersey Police for a number of weeks before being put down. St Helens, Merseyside, the 21st of March 22, this is all this year, um, child attacked at home by a dog that the family had owned for only a week. Merseyside Police via Facebook announced Tess had confirmed the dog was an American Bully XL. The 6th of March 2022, Woodhall Spa, Lincolnshire, three-month-year-old child killed after an attack at Oscar's Plantation, an area popular with dog walkers. A man and woman aged 54 and 40 were held in suspicion of being char in charge of an out of control husky dog had been released under investigation. That was a husky. Lampert of Wales, 10th of January 2022. A man was bitten by three dogs at a house in the town and subsequently died at the scene from his injuries, as recorded by Sir Dickian Coroner's office. A woman was subsequently arrested in connection with the attack. Three British bulldogs. Uh, and December. 22nd Dundee American Bully XL the owner of a dog kennel and carry was attacked by a dog police Scotland confirmed a man was pronounced dead at the scene now uh, this year alone that's six fatal dog attacks six in one year and we're only in July clearly there is something going on um, looking back at this um, I'll just pick out some other examples here's one that got uh, a good bit of attention at the time Birmingham, a woman died after being attacked by her dog. Her brother brought her to improve her mental health. Post-mortem examination revealed extensive injuries the court heard which likely caused her death. That was the Staffordshire Cross, the 5th of February last year. Um, I, I remember that case got a lot of attention. People were saying the brother was irresponsible doing that. Um, but, you know, going back, um, in this decade alone, the 2020s, I'm counting here, uh one two three four um ten ten fatal dog attacks in just this first quarter of the 2020s in this country ten now just to put that in context um assuming this list is complete and there may be cases that weren't documented in the whole of the 19 well actually from the 1986 to 1996 there were six fatal dog attacks in that whole 10 year period um, there's three, the three cases 
before the 20th century, but I'm guessing that far from complete, so I wouldn't hold that at face value. But um, 2000 to 2009, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 fatal attacks in the 2000s decade. But I think just looking at this list, it's clear that assuming it's complete, um, and actually this is based on sources um, outside of Wikipedia, dog attacks are on the rise, fatal dog attacks. Now, this is something that seems to provoke strong emotions, particularly from dog owners. And the usual refrain goes something like this whenever there's a report of a fatal dog attack. Don't blame the, blame the breed, blame the owners. Now, honestly, that reminds me a little bit of American gun owners who say it's not guns that kill people, it's people who kill people. Well, at some point you have to ask, is there actually a trend with this? So let's look at, I'm just going to go back through these cases again and name the species involved, the, the breed rather involved. This is the last, let's say, 10, 15 cases I'm going to read out. I'm just going to read out the dogs involved. American Bully XL. American Bully XL. Jane Corso. Rockweiler. American Bully XL. Husky. Free British Bulldogs. American Bully XL. American Bully. American Bulldogs. Staffordshire Cross. Chow Chow German Shepherd Cross. Staffordshire Bull Terrier and Mastiff Cross. American Bulldogs. Unknown. Large Bulldog Cross. Staffordshire Bull Terriers. German Shepherd. Staffordshire Bull Terriers. Staffordshire Bull Terrier. American Bulldog or American Pit Bull Terrier or Mastiff Bulldog. There must have been some confusion in that case. Staffordshire Bull Terrier Cross. Staffordshire Bull, excuse me, Staffordshire Pit Bull Cross. Pit Bull Cross. Lakeland Terrier. This one caught my attention because it's here in Sunderland. That seems to be the outlier. It's a smaller dog. And it reads, at the trial of the father, the court heard inquiry suggested the baby fellow was dragged from the bouncer and was mauled by the terrier, which had not been introduced to the newborn and may have been driven to attack by Reggie, such so a little child involved. Uncoordinated movements, the dog owner pleaded guilty at Newcastle Crown Court to being in charge of a dangerous dog. American Bulldog, American Pit Bull Terrier, Staffordshire Bull Terrier, German Shepherd Police Dog, Alaskan Malamutes, Pit Bull Terrier, two Pit Bulls, um, and it goes on like that. You get the idea. In almost all these cases, it's some sort of bulldog or bulldog variation. In all of these cases, these American bullies absolutely need to be banned. There's what is it? Four, four fatal attacks. Five, in fact, just looking at this, in less than a year. Five. Now you cannot tell me the breed is irrelevant. We're not hearing about greyhounds killing people. We're not hearing about golden retrievers killing people. Clearly, there is a problem with these large, powerful, stocky animals. And I think that, uh, you know, people who sort of get defensive about this, oh, my, my staff, he can't do anything, or my bulldog is harmless. Maybe it is. Maybe your own pet hasn't posed any problems. But I think there is a sort of denial with the, the owners of these dogs because they they obviously are defensive of the pet. They see a calm temperament. Um, I just think there is too much of a risk factor at play here. Now, in the Dangerous Dogs Act of 1991, which is a controversial act, some say it unfairly stigmatizes certain breeds. There are four breeds banned in the UK, as I understand it. Um, let me just double check this. This act was brought in in 1991. The four banned dog breeds are Pitbull Terriers, Japanese Totas, Dogo Argentinos, and Fila Brasileiros. The Pitbull Terriers are banned, yet some of these attacks have uh, involved them. But as I understand it, this isn't quite clear cut where these breeds are banned. Um, according to the report on this, a Wikipedia article. Um, I'll just read this out. If I can, if you just bear with me a second. Yeah, the Dangerous Dogs Act 1991 is an act of Parliament of the United Kingdom. Uh, this was in the major era. 
prohibiting or restricting certain types of dogs and codifying the criminal offence of allowing a dog of any breed to be dangerously out of control after 11 horrific attacks in 1991. Okay, so it was that specific year. Home Secretary Kenneth Baker promised to rid the country of the menace of these fighting dogs. The act has been controversial for failing to stem the rise of dog attacks and for focusing on the dog's breed or looks instead of an individual dog's behaviour. Um, it says the 1991 Act was introduced by then Home Secretary Kenneth Baker and was amended in 1997. The Act applies in England, Wales and Scotland with the Dangerous Dogs Northern Ireland Order in 1991 having a similar effect in Northern Ireland. The intention of the Act was the protection of the people prior to the Act. There was no criminal penalties for injuries or deaths caused by dog attacks. Um, and there's been numerous dog legislation in this country throughout the centuries. Um, Britain's long been a dog-loving nation, um, but we've also had a complicated history of dogs. We've used them as working dogs, as pets. Um, you know, fighting dogs as a blood sport has gone back to the 18th century, and it's long been illegal, um, as it is in most of the world, but it still goes on. Um, I think gangs involved in dog fighting are the scum of the earth and I support a lengthy prison terms for that. But um, in terms of domestic dog attacks, um, I think that people are in denial if they think that the breed is totally irrelevant. I mean, yes, any dog is capable of attack. I agree with that. And yes, you may have an American bully that has a good temperament, but I'm sorry, if your dog looks like it's come off a set of the omen, frankly, I'm going to be careful around that animal. I think the problem is um, that these animals are powerful and they're evolved to be fighting dogs to attack. They're powerful and they will not let go. That's dangerous, particularly around children. But as we've seen, uh, growing men have been killed by these animals. They're dangerous. So I absolutely think that American bullies should be added to this list. And I frankly, I question why, why anyone would want a powerful animal like this. I mean, they're not, they're not pets. I just question why anyone would want that sort of dog as a pet that is that powerful and that has evolved to fight and to be defensive. Now, if you're running a business and you need a guard dog, it might be useful for that reason. But people treating this like a little pooch that you can go for a, take for a walk, um, I think that they're deluded. Um, and it's tragic because people are losing lives. People are getting horrible injuries. I saw a report about a young woman in Texas and she was dog sitting. I think the breeds involved were bull terriers, um, but it was horrible. She basically got her face. This was earlier this year. She got severe, severe scarring on her face. She needed, she needs numerous surgeries. It's horrible. Incredibly brave young woman. She, um, had an optimistic out, 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 outlook, but she scarred for life. I mean, it was, it, it, she looked like a Burns victim. It was horrendous. Uh, disgracefully, it took the Dallas police 37 minutes to enter the property, which I think is appalling. But um, I'm tired of certain dog owners just getting defensive and saying, oh, it's not the breed. Look at the trend. All of these animals are powerful, all except that one case in Sunderland. All the other cases, they are powerful animals. They are um, fighting dogs or defensive dogs. You're not seeing this with greyhounds. You're not seeing it with golden retrievers. You're just not. And yeah, any dog can bite. Any dog can potentially be dangerous. But I do think that some breeds are just more dangerous than others. That's my gut feeling. Um, and honestly, if I was in someone's house and they had like even a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, I would be quite cautious around them. I have a friend and his brother has a staffy and he's always talking about how charming he is and so on. And you know, I believe my friend, I'm sure I'm sure he is. And people will argue, well, thousands of people have these dogs and nothing bad happens. That's probably true. But public safety matters more than sensitivities. The other thing I really um take issue with is dog owners who are not responsible. I've been in a situation where I'm in a public park. And the dog's running around now, that's fine. You know, give the dog exercise. But what really, really uh, bugs me is people who let the dog run up to a stranger or run up to someone else's dog without having any sort of control. Because, oh, my, my, my pet is harmless. 
take some damn control. It reminds me of these people who let their kids run wild and then blame everyone else because their little Kevin or Chardonnay can't do anything wrong. Take some damn control. It's one thing I think is, um, it really works me up. Dog owners who cannot control their pets. Um, I think it should be a legal obligation that if you're in a public place, your dog's on a lead. And I think the dog owners who don't have the dog on a lead, I know there are already some laws for this, but I think it should be enforced. Um, because it's this mentality that, my, you know, the temperament of my pet is fine. He's always fine. All it takes is one thing. Now, it may be, it may be, we don't know the background specifics of what have happened in these cases. It may be the heat. It may be that. But how does that explain attacks in December? How does that explain attacks at the beginning of the year when it was much milder? It may be a factor, but... So, um, I think people uh, who own these dogs are kind of defensive and in denial about it. Their own pet may be fine. And, of course, it follows that if someone is treating their pet in a loving and responsible way, it's less likely to be aggressive than someone who's abusing their pet or being irresponsible. But I still argue... That common sense shows that if you have a powerful animal that is has been evolved to fight and be a defensive animal, that is going to be a bigger safety risk than a dog that isn't bred for that purpose. Um, and most dogs probably have had some sort of historic purpose as hunting dogs or um, coach dogs or something like that. But, you know, you have to just put uh, look at the facts Look at what dogs have been involved in these fatal attacks. Five in the last year have involved American bullies. Just ban the damn things. I don't know why anyone needs them. Um, I mean, they they do not look passive to me. They look like something that's off the set of the yeoman. Um, so they, they should absolutely be, they be added to this list. How many people are going to be seriously injured? How many children are going to die? Um... It's not good enough to say, well, um, most people who own these dogs don't have a problem. I say if even one child dies, um, it needs to be looked into. But the thing is, it isn't one. It's five now in less than a year. It's clearly a problem with this. Um, so if you own an American bully and you're thinking, oh, my, my dog can't hurt anyone, I'm a good owner, maybe you are. But it isn't even about being a good owner. It's... I do think the breed is relevant, and I think there's kind of a collective denial that the breed isn't relevant. Just read out something else from the article. A 2021 study of fatal dog attacks in Europe during the period 1995 to 2016 gives the United Kingdom with 56 fatalities as fourth in the top five countries for number of human fatalities alongside Hungary. Hungary is apparently the worst. France, Romania and Poland. This was within European countries. The study also found that fatal dog attacks have been increasingly have been increasing significantly over time, which was not attributable to the increase in number of dogs, and stated the number of fatalities are indeed a very small tip of the dog attack iceberg, and the number of dog attacks that led to hospitalizations of the victim outnumbered fatalities by several orders of magnitude. Of course, there's going to be, it's, well, it's like the gun thing, you know, you can look at the number of mass shootings, but the number of people killed by guns, in, for example, domestic incidents, is going to be significantly higher. I say, you know, what about the number of people who have had life-changing scars from fatal dog, from dog attacks? This problem needs to be taken seriously, because, um, I mean, I'm not a parent. But I, I would be damn careful if I had children um, around these animals. I just think, um, I do think breeds are a factor. And looking at this, you can't honestly say that there is no correlation. You know, oh, well, it's just a coincidence, really. Um, I appreciate not everyone will agree with this. And some people will still insist, oh, it's purely down to the owner. Well, okay, uh, it's latest attack. The woman's, uh, the deceased woman's extended family said the dogs had a good temperament and she was a loving and kind owner. So how does that explain it? You know, there's no indication that she was abusive or anything like that. It might well be that there are people who are perhaps a bit naive 
and they buy these powerful animals that maybe they can't control. I think as a guiding principle, if you don't have the strength, physical strength to control your dog, you shouldn't have it. Let me know your thoughts. But I think, frankly, it scares me. The, these animals, um, they scare me because I think they just are unpredictable. And I think it doesn't matter if they've been passive or for years. Something could set them off, whether it's, who knows, whatever it is. But if they're naturally more powerful, I think they're naturally going to be more dangerous. Yes, any dog can bite. A chihuahua can bite. And you know what they say, little dogs have a bigger bark. But I'm sorry, a dax under a chihuahua is unlikely to be able to kill a person, possibly a child, but they're not going to pose the same generic risk as as an American bully is. They're just not, because they don't have the same strength. 